Y Twin Motion, and not Lumion. So this is Belinda, the product marketing manager at Twinmotion. And in this video, I had a chance to ask two experts from inside Twinmotion the questions you guys sent over Instagram. And as you saw, even some questions that I thought they would never want to answer. Now, this video covers a lot of things, so there will be timestamps available down below if you want to go straight to the topics that interested you. The first part of the video is a Q&A, then the second one is about some inside tips and new updates that Twinmotion just had, and some of which kind of blew my mind, to be honest. Now, this video is sponsored by Twinmotion, but not that this influences anything that will be presented in this video. It was really an honest conversation with the questions you guys had, and Twinmotion was really interested in supporting upstairs. Now, be sure to leave your extra questions down in the comments section, and I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, guys, so I'm here with Sam and Belinda. It's really a pleasure to have them here, two fantastic architects from Twinmotion. And as you saw in the intro, we're gonna run through a couple of items here in this video questions, tutorials, quick tips, and even image reveals. Awesome, thank you for having us, Oliver. I am Sam Anderson, Tech Marketing Manager here at Epic Games. Prior to Epic Games, I was at Shock Architects where I was doing architectural visualization as well as research and development. So now that I am at Epic, I teach architects how to use Twinmotion and Unreal Engine. Hi guys, and I'm Belinda, and I also studied architecture in Germany, specialized in all things 3D visualization, worked as an in-house visualizer for several architectural offices around the globe, and I'm now working as a product marketing manager for Twinmotion and making sure that um, all marketing efforts are well coordinated and we're creating marketing content and I'll make, just make sure that we communicate um, the right message to our audience. So as you saw, they know what, what they are doing. So expect a lot of interesting tips in this video. All right, so the first question, and these are questions from the community. This one is from Annabelle Akiko. And she asked if you can use Twinmotion directly on ArchiCAD, and if so, how do you adjust the lighting? Absolutely, that's a great question. So there are two ways that you can bring in ArchiCAD models. So if you wanted to export your model as an FBX or OBJ, you'd be able to bring that inside of Twinmotion. But you can also use something called Datasmith. So Datasmith is our file format that allows you to bring pre-constructed scenes into Twinmotion. So you are able to connect with ArchiCAD in that way, and you're actually able to bring the lights now into Twinmotion. So that is, I know, a, a great benefit for all of you who are designing inside of ArchiCAD. Now, one of the nice things about Datasmith is we have the option to do direct links. So we do have a plugin that enables you to work inside of ArchiCAD, and then whenever you have any changes, you're able to synchronize those changes within Twinmotion. So it saves you some time, so you're not always having to export and import that into Twinmotion. Yeah, honestly, I think it doesn't even make sense to use it otherwise, because for the daily workflow of, of an architect, you don't want to be exporting as, as an individual file, then in, importing back again. Well, uh, personally, I've always used the Datasmith data direct link for SketchUp in my case, but obviously on ArchiCAD it would be the same. Yeah, absolutely. I think the use case in which one would want to export something is if you're working with different teams and say someone doesn't have the latest version of ArchiCAD or doesn't have a software program, they could you could export the file format to them and send it to them that way. So just a different use case and different Yeah, workflow. interesting. Never thought about that. <laughs> so the next question is actually something that I, I want to get the answer to. Uh, and Drew is asking if you Twinmotion is going to expand the plant palette in the near future. I guess the vegetation, the asset library regarding the vegetation. And especially for me, because I'm from Brazil and when I'm doing images here, I usually tend to use a lot of trop tropical vegetation species, species. And we don't have much of that, not only in Twinmotion, but across the rendering, rendering engines out there. So is this something coming up? Yeah, future. yeah, we are always working on adding assets. So some assets will come native within Twinmotion with some of the latest updates. We do have that information on our roadmap. So if you were to search Twinmotion roadmap, you will find a product board that has all of that information. 
But I also want to talk about some of the other integrations within Twinmotion that are going to expand that library quite a bit. And that's the Quixel and SketchUp integration. So uh, I might have time to cover that later today and kind of do a, a little demo of it. But I think that's going to really expand your possibilities for getting some of those curated plants into your project. Awesome. Yeah, the Quixel integration is it, make, it makes a whole lot of difference. Right? Uh, it's <laughs> that the plants there are beautiful. So Yeah. All right. So this next question is from Bassman.pt. And he's, it's asking, what are the plans for the future of architecture visualization when it comes to bridging the gap between clients and architects? Yeah. So Twinmotion is a storytelling tool. And we want to make sure that you're able to tell those stories with your clients and stakeholders. So we have a few different options of ways that you can do that. And our plans to help improve that are, are really wonderful. So the first one is virtual reality. So if you are building out your project within Twinmotion, you can easily connect to virtual reality. Now, if you do not have the hardware specs for a virtual headset, we also have the ability to use Twinmotion Cloud. So that's something that's relative, relatively new, and it's going to allow you to send a link of your project to someone, whether it's a classmate, colleague, partner of your firm, or a client, and they're going to be able to take a look at your project whether it's on their phone, tablet, laptop, PC, and it doesn't matter the specs they have because it is gonna be browser-based. So it's going to be a web-based viewer, and you're going to be able to either curate the way that they walk through the space, whether it's through 360 panoramas, or you'll be able to fully give them full reign of your project so that they can walk around. And the nice thing about that one is that you can also keep all of your images and videos in there. So it's like you're sending a complete package to the client. So this next question is something that I guess everyone wants to know and hearing this answer from someone inside Twinmotion, it's going to be quite interesting. So why Twinmotion and not Lumion? Good question. And <laughs> my question back would be, uh, why not both? So I would say, coming from you know, having an architectural background and also having worked as a visualizer, <clears throat> I feel like besides the rather big difference in pricing, and if money isn't an issue, and if your wallet allows, then why not both? And because I feel like both have their advantages, both cover specific use cases, both have great libraries, um, and both do offer like ease of use, flexibility, uh, and great control over certain functionalities. So Lumion might offer more control in one area and Twinmotion offers more control in another. You know, it's not a matter of this or that tool. It's a matter of more like, what do you feel like most comfortable with in terms of UI, intuitiveness, uh, functionality? Um, it comes down to what do you want to achieve at the end of the day? You know, if you have a landscape project uh, where it's important to, you know, show a variety of trees and vegetation, then you might want to benefit from Lumion's great vegetation assets, which they are very known for and which Twinmotion doesn't fall short of. But it's a, it's a matter of taste here. And or if you if you would like to be able to take your um, Twinmotion file to Unreal Engine and hand it off to like a professional and you want to be able to add more functionality to your real-time project file, then you might want to be choosing Twinmotion in that instant, in that, in that case. Um, so I don't know, the list goes on. And at the end of the day, I'd say as a visualizer, as an artist, as a technical person, I feel like you want to make sure that you have a good range of different kinds of software tools ready at your fingertips uh, because not one single software does it all, you know, and you, you got to be able to have a nice uh, portfolio of tools ready for you. And, and then again, it, it comes down to what do you want to be able to, to achieve um, at the end of the day. So yeah, for sure. That's not, this or not that. the answer, I guess everyone was expecting to hear, but that's the, mm -hmm. the most truthful answer. And very diplomatic, it, it but also very, very true. It makes a lot of sense. And I do visualization as my daily work, not anymore for commissioned works, but here on YouTube and even for competitions. And 
I, I'm not uh, tied to one specific software, and I, I use a, a range of rendering engines, I guess. V-Ray, Twinmotion, Lumion, and especially lately with Twinmotion, I was able to achieve fantastic results and getting to that specific result that I wanted only because of Twinmotion. So it's it's a matter of choosing the best tool for, for that job. I think you answered yeah. it perfectly. <laughs> and now we have another question that also follows that same line of thought. For someone who has never used Twinmotion before, why would you recommend it? Maybe I can give an analogy here. So when you open up Twinmotion and you're a beginner and you're new to the world of real time, when you open Twinmotion, it feels like you're opening a cookbook, you know, with the first recipe being about a simple but very tasty banana bread. Yeah, and you, you have only a few ingredients, very comprehensible, self-explanatory. You look at the list of ingredients and items and you know in no time how to concoct a dish, right? Just just to give you an analogy. And that's how I feel when I open up Twin Motion. I feel like, okay, very comprehensible, good overview, self-explanatory, very intuitive. And then you just start playing. It's plug and play, drag and drop. That's what Twin Motion was designed to be and to 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 you know to cater to uh, the non-specialist. So you don't have to be a pro to enter the world of real time. So let's say you're a beginner and you want to dive right into like the complexity of a game engine like Unreal. You know, you got to be a very seasoned chef cook in order to start <laughs> cooking. And with Twinmotion, it's okay. You're just, you know, easy, simple. So that's that's the nature of Twinmotion that we took the game engine technology, the complexity and made it simple for beginners. It's It's the first step into the complexity of real time with twin motion it's a good gateway got it yeah and on the first video that i did on twin motion i even titled it some a very very catchy very not clickbaity but very catchy you know in a sense that saying that twin motion is the is the tool that that's now on the rise and everyone should mm -hmm. use it and and i was really blown away by the comments of all of these architects saying that it was it was twin motion that was allowing them to move faster inside the, the office and visualize it as they design and not use mm -hmm. uh, the the typical rendering process which real time allows that and th this next question just follows exactly that and i guess i, I kind of already answered it but i would love to hear your thoughts on it why would an architect working on conventional projects use real time renders over view rate and i guess you could include all of those typical ren CPU renderings on mm -hmm. the, the V-Ray. Yeah, like, so why a game engine over what we call offline render tools? And I think it doesn't matter if it's conventional or not, or original it's project is project. <laughs> and it, I would say that uh, game engine technology just enables a new way of thinking, a new way of creating, a new way of communicating one's complex ideas in a very simple way where everybody can have a, a look, a say, and an easy way of understanding what's inside your head. And with real-time slash game engine technology, the core essence here is simplification of communication. So whether or not you're working on a conventional project or not, you know, it's a new way of experiencing people's ideas. Also a new way of solving problems because um, with game engines you can just quicker, better, iterate and prototype several different design options in no time, in a speedy manner without compromising visual fidelity, without compromising graphical quality. And I think that is solving one of the biggest problems we had so far in the world of 3D rendering, you know? So with real time, I think um, we, we are helping to solve that specific problem of communicating something very complex in a very simple manner without compromising uh, good quality graphics. Yeah, for sure. And I see pretty much visualization in, in two packages, I guess. I don't know if you agree with me, but it's the, the images are going to go 
to Instagram or make it to YouTube or even to an architectural visualization portfolio that's focused on that. And that you will, you're going to be able to spend a little bit more time and curate that to, to make it more appealing. But but the other group, I would say, is the, the daily images that you got to produce for clients that, in a sense, won't appreciate the extra time that you spend on Photoshop tweaking that little feature. Uh, it, they just want to perceive the space. They just want to feel the ambience. And and more and more, I'm, I'm seeing real-time renderings taking the space in, in firms because of that process, that ease of use and agility that it gives you. Not not saying that you should use one and ditch the other, as as Belinda just just said, but it's one tool for each each scenario. Yep, absolutely. It, it just gives you a bit more freedom, I would say. Freedom, flexibility. Okay, so the last two questions, they more or less cover the same type of issue, I guess. This person is asking, when will render elements come out in Twin Motion? Because I know everyone wants that feature to come out, but then it all, I'm, I'm also going to do the next question. And so we can talk about this, uh, this topic. Do you guys expect Twin Motion to output an image that's already perfect, that's already done without the need of Photoshop? Or is it usual, does the usual workflow uh, okay. has Photoshop in mind? Okay, so first question, answer is, uh, I and certainly Sam as well, we also want render elements. It's, it's like, it's a very important feature. We acknowledge it. Um, when I was working as an architectural visualizer, I, you know, I used an offline render tool. It, it was kind of realistic and it didn't need much touch-ups, you know, but I still wanted to have it go through Photoshop, you know, so I could have my own creative freedom and my own artistic freedom and add my own character to it, which you can do perfectly with Photoshop, right? And yeah, so as an ardent Photoshop lover, I would really like to see render elements as well. And the entire Twinmotion team is aware and we all deem it important and it is on the list. But I can't tell you when we are able to work on it. It's, it's on the list, but I can't give you um, an exact time frame. So to answer the second question, um, yes and no. We want to be able to render out an image as realistic as possible without you having to put too much of an extra extra effort and extra post-processing work just in case you know you're on your daily grind and you want to get it done quickly and you have a deliverable and you don't have time for photoshop that's when we want to be able to help you with that specific use case but then again if you are if you do have the time and you do want to fine-tune it a little bit and add your extra character to the image then we do not want to be a closed box, right? We want to be open-ended and help you bring in that rendering into any kind of image editing um, tool, such as Photoshop. So yes yeah, and no, <laughs> we, we, we know and, and we're, we're gonna try to push some buttons. <laughs> we always try, we always do. And I'll give my take on, on the render elements, I guess. Sure. Uh, and from, from my experience, that just uh, two months ago, I joined a, an architectural competition and we were thinking about which software we're going to use because uh, the, the project was designed and, and modeled in ARCHICAD. But then obviously I was going to export to probably SketchUp because I was going to use some, some rendering engines there. But then I was thinking about using Twinmotion. But with, the, with all of the rush from the competition, we, we knew that we we needed the render elements to make minor tweaks, especially with the, the facade material, because we didn't know the exact tonality, the color, the nuances that we we're going to go for the, with the facade. And Photoshop allowed that very easily, but we needed the render elements to, to use that capability or, or, or else we would have to select everything by hand. So then we chose not to go with Twinmotion, unfortunately, just because of that. So hopefully you guys mm -hmm. consider that very much and... <laughs> Uh, make the, the whole team focus towards making that update. Okay, so that concludes the questions and answers. And now we're going to jump into useful Twinmotion skills that you can learn. And uh, Sam is going to talk about 
the the recent update, the recent release that Twin Motion just had. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a little bit of a treat for y'all. We wanted to come on here and show you some of our latest release uh, features. So this came out July 12th. So I wanted to walk through a few of those new features with you. So you'll see that we have our screen up here. I have my Epic Games launcher. And we will be working with this Twin Motion 2022.2. So this is the latest version that has the new features I'll be covering today. So I'm going to go ahead and select launch here. And now there are a lot of different features that came out with this newest release, but I'm going to be covering four different ones in particular. So it's going to be the sketch, sorry, it's going to be the Sketchfab integration, as well as the gravity tool with the high resolution renders. And then lastly, the HDRI tools. Okay, so you'll see that I have a twin motion project open up on my screen. I did want to point out how you can work on one of the demo scenes within the project. So if you go to demo scenes here and then go over to Lake House Retreat, it's going to have a sample project that you'll be able to work through. Now, I know that I find this very helpful to have a project to always refer back to, to understand how another artist is lighting the scene or creating the videos or images. So all of this information is going to be embedded in this project. Now, this project is going to have a, a wide range of assets that you can look at as well. And it's also going to have interior scenes and exterior scenes that you can learn from. So now we have the project open up here. So you'll see we have some assets already inside the project. So we have a boat and some rocks and some chairs. So many of these are native within Twinmotion, but we understand that is you know, we can only provide you so much with, with those assets. So we really wanted to open up the doors for you and understand how can we get more assets to our creators. So if you go to the left-hand side, you'll see that there is a pop-out arrow here and we have our library. So we have a lot of native objects within Twinmotion here. And if you go down, you'll see that there is a Sketchfab icon here. So with your Epic Games account, you are able to have access to the Sketchfab library. So if I were to click on these, maybe food and drink, you'll see you have a lot of different options here that are not just food. I just like to pull that one up because it's always fun to look at food, but we have nature and plants here as well. So if there were certain aspects or a certain asset that you were looking for, you could go up and search and download that. So. For instance, say, say I want to put a cooler by this boat. Now, I know this isn't the most architectural uh, asset, but that also is saying that sometimes you need to bring in assets that you can't find online uh, very easily within some of the native libraries. So if I were to search for cooler, one would pop up. I could select that here and it's going to tell me the size, the designer of the original model, and then you could open this up in Sketchfab and it's going to have all of the information here. Now you'll be able to download this and bring it in. And so we have some uh, workflows with Sketchfab that were documented in a recent live stream that we did. So I'd encourage you to check out our YouTube where we did a live stream with Sketchup going through all of the different aspects of Sketchfab. And I'll make sure to leave it in the video description for you for you guys to awesome. check it out with more ease. And I was going to may I ask a question yeah, during this process. The, is the Sketchfab similar to the Quixel connection? It's just like one more option of this, because the, with the Quixel one, the library is just huge already. And then with, then Sketchfab is just doubling that hugeness, I guess. <laughs> exactly, yeah, that's absolutely right. So there are thousands, thousands and thousands of assets oh, in Sketchfab in addition that's to Quixel. really Quixel. useful. That's really, really useful. Yeah, yeah, so this, uh, really just opens up the doors of making it easier to bring stuff in. So it's not like you have to go, you know, get it from an online thing, bring it into a modeling program and then bring it into Twinmotion. You're able to just drag and drop it in. Yeah, and I guess especially for accessories and just populating the scene with the, those little details, because it takes a, such a long time to find it in SketchUp and then you could totally, totally right. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes fantastic. you just... You want to have those like fine-tuned details or uh, very quirky details that are going to really bring the project to life or or even if there's something that you know that your client likes uh, so for instance another fun one we have here is the cars and vehicles so i know a lot of times like if you're working with a client who you know has a particular car they want to see in there they'll 
it's just opens up your options for being able to work with different assets here. And Sam, would I be able to bring the Sketchfab assets into Unreal and then animate them? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So if you wanted to, you could bring in any of these assets into Twinmotion and then whenever it transfers into Unreal, it's going to be similar to that data smith technology. So it's going to take the asset as it is in Twinmotion and bring that into Unreal Engine. And then we have the ability to do some, some animations within Unreal Engine. So you could key a asset or a character or anything that you would like inside of Unreal Engine. Yeah, so very, very powerful tools. And so I think that's something that's really nice about Twinmotion is it keeps things open-ended. So if you're a designer and you're working through here and say you want to be able to animate that and you have someone who is familiar with Unreal Engine, you could just pass off your Twinmotion model to Unreal Engine and they'll be able to develop it further. So with that, uh, I will. I do want to showcase the Quixel assets. So I'm going to go back to the library here. So similar to Sketchfab, we also have a Quixel Mega Scans integration. So this is going to be more based off photogrammetry instead of the modeling aspect of Sketchfab. So if I go to Quixel Mega Scans here, I know we had a question about the 3D plans. So you'll see that we have um, a couple of different options here for types of plants, but I'll go to aquatic. Oh, let's see, let's do something that might be a little bit more useful. So let's go to fern here. So you'll see that we have different ferns here and each of these have many different options for you. So we have thousands of assets here that really open up uh, your options for bringing things in. And the Quixel quality is beautiful. It's stunning. I, I love using them in my projects. I think they really bring the next level of fidelity to images. So I, I play around with those a lot, um, but I actually want to use these Quixel materials and objects to showcase the next tip, which is going to be the gravity tool, which is new to Twinmotion and honestly something I find to be very fun. So I'm going to go into my scene here and I am going to uh, place a few things in here. So to get started, I'm going to bring in food. So say I want to put in a fruit bowl here. So I'm gonna drop a couple of bananas in here and then maybe a pear as well. And now let's go get a bowl to drop this into. So if I go back to my 3D assets and I type in bowl here, I can search that and you'll see that we have a lot of different bowls. I'm going to bring this in. And one thing I did wanna note is I am able to drag and drop this in because I've already downloaded it. But if I wanted to get one of these other ones, you'll see that there's a download button here. So I can click that and it's going to download and now I'll be able to drag and drop it in. I'm going to manipulate this a little bit and set this up so that we can bring all of this fruit into this bowl. So I'm using this toolbar here in the middle of the screen. So this is going to allow me to edit the assets and move them. So this is my transform rotate and scale. So I'm going to scale this up quite a bit. And now I am going to start to move these around as well. So you'll see that these are kind of on top of the, the table here. So if I wanted to place that on the table, there's something that is new within Twinmotion that's going to allow you to do that. So you see I have this banana here. If I go over to this icon, it's going to allow me to move it with collision. So if I click this, it's going to apply a mesh collision around the geometry in the scene. And what it's going to be do is it's going to be calibrating that as I transform the object. So if I move this down, you'll see that it stops at the table. So I know sometimes the amount of times wow. that I have. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is in. <laughs> right? It's, it's just, it's, it can be a game changer as far as the amount of times that I like had to zoom in and make sure it was, you know, just above, um, just above the, the table or the ground. We're just really trying to save time for, for people and, and to make things a little bit more realistic as well. So I'm, you know, placing each of these here and then I can showcase the gravity tool. So the gravity tool works in the same way. It is 
going to generate those mesh meshes around the collision mesh around the geometry. And it's going to be based off of a convex collision. So in some cases, it may not be perfect. It's you know something that we are exploring and wanting to improve, but it is going to give us you know what we need for the most part. So I'm gonna move this over here so we can take a look at it, get them all in the right spot. And now I'm going to select each of them. So uh, let me go ahead and select these here. So I'm using control on my keyboard to select them. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit this gravity button. So you'll see that uh, only one of them made it in, but that's okay, because I can do control Z. And I can go in and make this a little bit bigger and move it over. And so what this is gonna enable you to do is like really curate your scene and bring it to life in ways that um, aren't necessarily you have the time to do, like to go and set each of these things in. So I'll do it once again and we'll see, we got a couple more in there. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> this I'm using is really this. really fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so I'm using this for a fruit bowl, but it can be used for anything. You can imagine how helpful this could be for just placing assets quickly out yeah, on the Yeah, the amount deck. of times that I, that I had chairs just floating on a scene, and then just right. after doing the post-production, I had to fix it in Photoshop because I forgot. This, is, this will solve a lot of those issues. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, so that's what, that's kind of, wraps up the, the gravity section. We will be having you know, more tutorials going out on some of this information. So I just wanted to give you a little, a little preview of what it's like. Uh, but now we can use this to take a look at some of the high resolution uh, renderings that we have. So if I were to set up a view here, go down to the left-hand side to create media tab, I'm gonna go to image and I'll hit plus to create a new image. So if you go down to more underneath this image down at the bottom, you'll see that we have some new features under format. So as I mentioned, this section of the tip is going to be going over some of our high resolution rendering formats. So here under output size, we have 2K, 4K, 8K, and 16K. So you'll see that this 16K is not allowing me to select it. And that's because I need to enable this tiled rendering. So what this is going to do is it's going to break up your large render into smaller chunks so that it can render without being too costly for your GPU. So with that on, it's going to stitch all of the tiles at the very end to create that one render size. So this is going to add in a little bit of time to your render, but honestly, not, not too much. So I'll, I'll demo that here. So I'm going to select 16K. I have my tile rendering on. Um, if you wanted to, if you're working for Instagram or something, an Instagram post, if you wanted to, you could also do custom and select your own custom ratio here. So if you want it to be square or landscape, you have the abilities to do that as well. But I'm gonna go over to this bottom tab where it says export, and I'm going to select that image that I just created. And I'm going to hit start export and I'll just place it on my desktop for now. So I'll hit select or hit the folder that I want it to bring in. And it's going to give you an estimated time left. So here you'll see how quickly it's going. And this is using the real time rendering. So we'll take a look at what the quality looks like once it's all done. But I do want to note that this is all being done. I, I, I do have a graphics card that is DirectX 12 enabled, so I could do path tracing, but this is actually just using the real-time rendering. So I hope this shows that it's not stunting you too much to not have that DirectX 12, um, but it does allow you to take your visual to the next level if you needed to. Um, but honestly, if I'm working very quickly and I just want to get an idea, I use the real-time rendering as is in twin motion. So, um, We'll let this go a little bit here. And what, what's the use case of a 16K uh, yeah. image size? Because uh, I'm eager to know, I would imagine just printing it on a really large piece of paper, but. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple different use cases. So sometimes when you're doing panoramas, if you were doing panoramas that were going to be, you know, viewed in a headset or, um, you know, that's going to allow you to increase the size because there was, a kind of cap on pixels that you could do. And so now we're opening up that door for people. 
And we also have the ability to do those large renders. I know when I was working uh, as a renderer at an architecture firm, there were many times where there would be construction walls that we wanted to placard a rendering on so that people, as they walk through the space, can get an idea of what the render is going to look like or what the space is going to look like. And so we needed those to be very large for printing. And so now you have the ability to do it within Twinmotion. Interesting. Let's take a look. So I just rendered out that image. So I'm going to pull it up here. And this is helpful also for cropping. So if you wanted to, you know, like I'm zooming in here and we get look at all of the details of some of these elements. So if I want to render out an image and then later crop it so that I'm only seeing uh, like the, the boat there, then you'll be able to crop it down and be able to have control over that. So um, this is going to just kind of open up the door for you if you want to be able to control, you know, crop and size things later. So that can be helpful there as yeah, I think, well. I think that can work especially for Instagram ca carousel. Is that oh, how you absolutely. Say it, right? Yeah. When you just, you got you, you want to swipe through the, the photos and maybe you can do a very horizontal image where you have all of that resolution right from the rendering and you don't have to render separately. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's very true. If you wanted to curate um, either the carousel or even if it's just the, the format in which you put it up, you could break down a longer render using this. So this kind of wraps up my tips for today. I know it's kind of short, but we do have a lot of tutorials and tips coming up on our YouTube for Twin Motion. So I encourage you to follow along and see more tips there as well. All right, so that concludes uh, this video. Thank you so much, Belinda and Sam, for, for being here and sharing these amazing tips, not only the Q&As, which answered a lot of community questions that not only you guys had, but also I had some of them. And the tips, well, you have all of these incredible updates that you just saw, and I'm eager to testing them out. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Belinda, for being here. Thank you for having us all. Yes, thank you so much. We are so excited to see what the audience and crowd does. So I know we have a lot of artists out there, so we are very eager to see all of your artwork. All right, if you have any extra questions, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Maybe I'll be, be able to answer them or even the community can help out. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.